Thank you for tuning in to Crime 411 with me, Melissa Marquet. I will be speaking shortly with Jessica Bishop Holt. She is the mother of five-year-old Keaton Boggs. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Keaton's story, Keaton passed away on March 20th, uh, 2020, after being beaten by his biological grandmother, Michelle Boggs, her daughter, Chastity Wodzinski, and her daughter's husband, Peter Wodzinski. These folks are all on the father's side of the family. These monsters are currently in jail with no bond and are all being charged with child abuse leading to murder. Jessica will be joining me here in just a moment. She had been working so hard to get reunited with Keaton. She had been in rehab and she actually is sober 403 days today. And Crime 411 and myself personally want to congratulate her on such a victory, especially now going through such a tragic time to stay sober in the midst of such tragedy is truly nothing short of miraculous. She will be joining us to talk about her son and about the folks who have been arrested in his murder. Um, this, this poor boy, he, he passed away from bleeding on the brain. He was covered from head to toe in bruises and knots size bruises that um, are just unfathomable to anyone with any sort of a conscience. He had an inch and a half laceration on his male organ, which I can't even, I say that out loud and it makes me physically sick. These monsters, like I said, they are in jail and they are all being charged with murder. And I hope that justice is served for Keaton. And we certainly here at Crime 411 are going to do every single thing that we can to make that happen. Joining me on the phone right now is Jessica, Keaton's mother. Jessica, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for speaking yeah, with me as well. Well, first of all, obviously, I want to tell you, there are no words to tell you how incredibly sorry we are for, for everything that you're going through and for your loss. And we will do everything that we can to help you get justice for your son. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Of course. So, so what, what do you want to tell us about Keaton? Tell us a little bit about what kind of a little boy he was. Um, he, he was the baby, um, the youngest. Um, he, he, like, does that the youngest child syndrome, like, where they're, like, just the naughtiest and they know it and, <laughs> and they, they can get away, get away with it. With it. <laughs> That's just how he was. Um, he was a real quiet, real sweet baby. Um, when he turned about a year old, he started getting, like, I'm going to be wild. Watch me do this. <laughs> so I, I take it that he was a fearless little boy. Yeah, he was. Um, but when he wanted Bob on and he wanted cuddles, like his siblings, like, that's what they did. Yeah. So I know that... Um, when you when you and Keaton's father were together, which was obviously when when this was many years back, did you spend much time with his mother Michelle and his sister Chastity at all? Yes, I did. What were they like back then? Um, me and Chastity had a decent relationship. Um, obviously, me and Christopher were married. So that was my sister-in-law. Uh, we bonded a lot. Um, I spent time with her kids. She spent time with my kids. Um, but there were always quarrels going on. Um, Michelle started so many problems in her family and my family, um, mine and Chris's family, like our little family together. Michelle was a nasty, nasty person. Um, she was always she was never happy about anything. She would borrow money from us, steal money from us. Um, and then she wasn't happy when me and Chris were happy. Like she would always have to cause problems. So she was only happy if there were problems and drama and chaos. She thrived in misery. That's, uh, that's definitely not the kind of person that <laughs> you want to be raising, raising your child. That's for sure. Um, I, I know that when Chris was little, 
from what I was told, maybe you can verify this, Jessica. I was told that when Chris was really little, that Michelle and her husband, who were Chris, was Chris's stepfather, didn't really want him and Chastity, and so they went to live with his stepfather's sister. Do you know anything about that? Um, yeah, that was voiced to me by some of their family and by Christopher as well um, when him and I were married. Do you know about how old he was? Was he about the same age as Keaton? Yeah, probably roughly around the same age because I remember him showing me pictures of him and his sister when they were much younger. And I remember him being probably right around Keaton's age. Around Keaton's age. Did he happen to say whether or not Michelle was physically abusive to him? Um, he loved his mom, but he told me stories and stuff about how she acted and um, always forced and like, he said he remembered being sick, but not being sick when he was little. Um, and I can't remember who told me, it might even have been Christopher, but I mean, that's so long ago, that she had him in and out of hospitals and doctors and that there's never really anything wrong with him. So yeah, someone in, in the family had shared that, that with me also, um, and I've spoken to a few people on his side, so I can't remember who it was, but they said that he was on this, like all this seizure medication and stuff that he didn't even need, and um, she was doing that to keep him sick to get a disability check, which is really like um, Munchausen by proxy, right? Like where those parents, they, they seek attention and they keep their children sick and and whatnot or whether it's for attention or if it was for a check is you know god only knows but um so he remembers not feeling sick but being in the hospital a lot i would believe that a hundred percent um because the way she acted um with her grandkids and my kids and even herself would strongly indicate that that would be accurate i mean i can't vouch for that because i wasn't around right. when he was that young Right, right. But you were that young sense, too. Yeah, she she would you know make a big fuss about nothing in her life. Like she would like fake things and be like overly dramatic about things for attention. Okay, so she had some serious issues. It sounds like she wasn't all right. Um, she, I don't know. Like part of me doesn't even want to you know try to blame myself on some kind of mental illness. She was just a nasty person. Yeah, for I, I I understand, and um, and so do you have any idea how long your um your husband at that time had lived with with his other family members, like until he was how old? I don't. You don't know. Okay, and so Chastity, you said you and her had a, a bond. Um, did she did she ever mention anything about her mother that Chris had mentioned similarly, like where she had been sick and she but she didn't really feel sick or anything like that, or or was that really just more directed toward Chris? It's more Christopher. More Christopher. Yeah. Okay. So one thing I want to touch on real quick, um, you know, for for folks that are wondering, you know, why Keaton was with his father's mother after Chris after his dad passed away. Um, you know, people, people, I want them to understand a little bit more about addiction and how that wreaks havoc on your life. It, you know, nobody wakes up one day and says, hey, you know, I think I'll become an addict and, uh, and not have my children today. So it, it's, not, it's not something that, that anybody wakes up and plans for. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your experience through, you know, addiction and recovery so that people can understand a little bit more what that's like? Of course, of course. Um... Yeah, I mean, like you said, no one decides one day, you know, I want to be an addict. Nobody decides one day that they want to be homeless on the streets for years shooting dope. Like, that's never a thought for someone. Um, it, it's hard. I mean, you can get into it really, really quick, but it's harder to get out. It takes more time to get your life back together than it does to destroy it makes a lot of sense and you've been sober for 403 days today which is amazing so congratulations yes, on that thank you you're welcome and like i said earlier you know and i said the same on a video that we covered for keaton um, a few days ago anyone who can stay sober through what you're going through that's miraculous that's a, that's a miraculous feat and for anybody who is watching 
that may have addiction issues and they feel that maybe they can't get through it, you know, you are, you are a prime example that if you can get through this with everything that you have going on and stay sober, so can they. Yeah, I mean, I would not have been able to do it without the support system that I have. Like, this is truly, like, the, the deepest connection I have ever had with any human in my life is with the people that I'm in recovery with. Like, these are people who get me. They understand me. They care about me. They love me when I can't love myself. Like, these are good people. And I leaned on this giant group of people that I have, you know, the night I find out about Keaton. Um, up until 4 o'clock in the morning, like, I was just making phone calls to phone calls because I was not all right. I can imagine. And, and these people let me lean on them until I was okay, until I could gather my thoughts enough to function. And yeah. they're still here for me. And they're, I was going to say, and they're still there for you. And, and, you're, and yeah. I've seen that, you know, you're there for others, which, which is amazing. Like you said, there's something about helping someone else through addiction and recovery that is healing in and of itself. So, Absolutely. you know, so Absolutely. when it comes to obviously, you know, with everything that, that you're going through, the loss of your son, knowing what you know about Michelle and Chastity, who do you think physically harmed him? Do you, what is your gut feeling? Do you have one? Um, I don't know. That's really something I haven't tried to spend too much time on. Um, because what I keep going back to, I can't focus on like when he actually was beaten to the point to where he passed. Like what is haunting me the most is how sad was he? Oh, um, yeah. you know, what, what did my son have to go through? Like, were they, was he put in a, a position and situations where he was beat, 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 beat and mistreated? And then like, they would throw him a birthday party and he would just be so happy to have gifts and love and attention, you know, for the show of a camera or something. Yeah. Like that's, that's what's haunting me. So I haven't given much thought to it. Um, they did what they did. And I can't, I can't fix that. Um, I just, I, I'm, like I said, I'm struggling with, you know, knowing that my son has gone through this since his dad has passed. I am so, so sorry for, for everything. And I can only imagine the things that go through your mind. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you must have been absolutely just shocked that these people who you once were called family would do something like this. I didn't call them family. That was not my family. I love Chris. Mm -hmm. Chris loves me. And as far as that's concerned, like that was not my family. Michelle lived with us for a little while and I couldn't stand her. I didn't want her in my home. Understandably so, yeah. Um, yeah, when, when I found out that Chris had, uh, that she had given Chris and Chastity up when they were younger, and it was around the same age, you know, that kind of um, light bulb went off for me a little bit because it was like, okay, well, maybe this is an age that she doesn't feel she can tolerate or, you know, um, not even really sure exactly what my thoughts are, but it, it, it made me think, you know, that if, if this was around the same age, I found that a little bit curious. Yeah, like at what age do children stop being a benefit? You know, when, it, when does it like, the burden of a child outweigh a benefit. You know, like, there's a lot of what ifs. Um, right. Now, they are being charged with murder, these three. Um, do they have the death penalty in West Virginia? Um, they do not. Um, the most, the harshest uh, thing that they could serve would be life without parole. Okay. Do you have any idea when their next court date is, and do you plan to be there? I will definitely be there, and no, I don't know when the next court dates are. Okay. Well, what else would you like people to know about, about Keaton, you know, um, your son? I have pictures you, up here he... of you in the hospital when he was born, and, and, and you just you could see how much love you have for him in these pictures. What, what do you want people to know most about your son? you have for you know your middle children that you don't have for your oldest or your youngest and like that was my last baby 
Yeah. That was my last little guy. I was wondering, um, did you know Peter, or did he kind of come around later after you and Chris were not together any longer? Yeah, I know. I know PJ. You do? What is he like? He was an addict. Um, in my personal opinion, he was not a nice person. Um, I've seen him be aggressive with his kids and stuff, and, like, he was a very aggressive person towards a lot of people. PJ was? Yes. Well, you had mentioned also, you had found out where, where they were living, because I know that they moved around a lot, and they were very, very, very focused on making sure that you could not see your son, um, and it was kind of hard to keep track of where they were at times, and I know that you mentioned you had found out where they were living at one point and went to the house, and they literally were, like, trying to fight you in the yard? Yeah. C yeah, um... There was, like, times before that where I had found out where they were staying. Like, they were not living anywhere. They were probably just, like, you know, house surfing from place to place. And there was a couple occasions I would find out where Chris and Keaton were. And Chris would let me, like, come by and talk to him. And they would hide Keaton in the basement with his mom and wouldn't let me see him. And I sat up there and cried, and I begged him, let me see Keaton. And he's like, my mom won't let you. I was like, that's not your mom's son. Please let me see my son. And this happened a couple of different places. Um, and the one, the one incident you were just speaking about, um, I had showed up at the house, and I had some issues going on in my personal life. You know, I, I can be transparent about it because it doesn't bother me. But mm -hmm. I had warrants, and this is before I got clean. And I hadn't answered to those warrants yet, so I couldn't have any run-ins with the law. And they used that against me. Like, they will call the law if you don't leave. That's um, terrible. At that point, my custody hadn't, I hadn't lost any rights to my kids. Like, I still had custody of my kids. He just wouldn't let me around them. Like, I could not get near my son. That must have been so hard for you. It, it was hard. And, I mean, after all that, like... Uh, you know, I had left the one outside, and his mom and his sister come outside, and they were trying to fight me, and so I just left the property, and they got in the car and followed me down the road, yelling at me, and I just, I had never done anything to these people. She, Michelle just did not like me. She didn't want me around her son. She didn't want anyone around her son. I was just going to say, it almost seems like she had some sort of a weird, a weird type of attachment to her son where it was like almost like you were in the way or you know yeah. do you know what I mean like you're getting his attention and, and and she didn't she didn't like that I would agree with that it's been like that since the beginning yeah see that's and terrible there's just a, I don't this is kind of hard to explain but I feel like because she had blamed me at Christopher's funeral um for him overdosing she blamed um, you yeah, she blamed me. We hadn't been together in a couple of years, and I had since gotten clean. But, I mean, I can understand where she had some bitterness towards me because we used heroin together. And I feel guilty about that to this day. Um, I wish we could have gotten clean together and a lot sooner. Like, this stuff wouldn't be happening. But that's not the reality of it. Um, and I don't know, like, in my mind, it makes sense that she maybe had, like, I don't know, like she kind of felt like I took her son from her. Maybe she wanted to take my son from me. I don't know. Like, these are just things, like, floating around in my head. And I'm trying to make sense of them, and they're not making a whole lot of sense. To me, I don't think that they're – I don't even know if people like that think that far, you know? Um, yeah. I think I think they're just bad people. And like you said, she's a miserable person, and – I don't, I don't even know if they think far enough to say, well, you, you, you know, took my son, so I'm going to take your son. But I can see why you would have those thoughts going through your mind and, and, and those questions, you know? Yeah. I mean, it makes me think that because they, um, Chassie and PJ's kids weren't abused. Were not? They were not. I mean, not, not to my knowledge. Do you happen to know if... Um, cause I've heard some different things. I've heard Michelle lived with Chastity and PJ. And then I also heard that she was only there sometimes that she had a, a male friend that she would stay at his house. Like, do you know 
who most of the time your son was living with, or do you not know? Did they not tell you? I, I, I don't know. Um, they had after I had went to jail this last time, um, in the process of me getting clean, I had found out they had moved to PA. So all of them were living in PA together when Chris overdosed. I got and you. I, be- I believe they were still living in PA um, after Chris had overdosed and then moved back to this area, as far as I know. I got you. Okay. It's interesting, though, that her, her history, like with, with Chris telling you he remembers being sick and being in the hospital a lot, but he wasn't actually sick. You know, things like that clearly say this person doesn't is not putting the children first by any means. Um, you know, it's a shame that, that somebody didn't... Um, take legal action at that time, you know, if the, but I would imagine nobody really even knew that that was the case. Yeah. You know, well, like I said, you know, we, we want to just tell you, you know, I, I'm personally so proud of you for your sobriety through all of this. It's amazing to me. And I'm sure that your son is so proud of you too. And we will definitely continue to follow Keaton's story and the updates that happen with these three despicable animals that are in jail. Um, and you know, if there's anything that we can do or, or anything at all that we can help with to help you get justice for your son, I hope that you'll let us know. Absolutely. I appreciate your time and how much you care. Like it, it makes a big difference. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's, it's the least we can do. Um, well, Jessica, thank you so much again. Um, you know, Keaton, Keaton Boggs, that's the, that's her son. That's the little boy. And uh, we will continue to update you on Keaton's story and the progress of the case. And uh, again, Jessica, thank you so much for, for sharing, you know, story with us and, and details and your time. Oh, well, you're welcome. All right. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. You, Have bet. A good night. you too. Boy, that's, um, that's a hard thing to talk to someone about, isn't it, though? But, uh, boy. My heart breaks for her. I, I can't even imagine, Jessica, what she's going through right now. Um, but again, as you heard, you know, her herself, you can tell that she is a pillar of strength right now for her son. And I hope that justice is served and that these three people never, ever, ever see the light of day again as long as they live. Um, again, we'll update you more on this story as we, as we get more information. Please subscribe to Crime411 on YouTube on Facebook. We are on Twitter and Instagram. Our website is crime411.org. Thank you again for tuning in and we will see you soon. Uh, right. So what are you, what are you, um,